Hello everybody, welcome to Coding Blocks. Today I basically want to go over several of the different types of joins and a few extra things like group buys and unions. This is a follow-up to our podcast episode 14 at www.codingblocks.net slash episode 14. So if you listen to that episode and you kind of wanted to see what this data looks like and what we were talking about in the podcast, then this will help you that with that. If you're just finding this, please do go check us out at www.codingblocks.net slash episode 14 and uh, listen to the podcast. You may pick up a little bit there. So let's go ahead and get rolling. So I'm using Microsoft SQL Server 2012 right now, and I just want to show some simple examples. So first off, we have a jobs table, a person's table, and a person jobs table. And Yes, I know persons would not be correct, but a lot of times people just append an S to the end of whatever the object is. So let's take a look at what's in these tables. So select all from persons, select all from jobs. So let's let's have a peek in these tables and see what we have. So we can see that the, the person table is actually pretty simple. So you have a person ID, you have a parent person ID, which in this case would like Johnny's uh, parent would be Adam, Adam Alpha, and uh, so on down the line. And we have 10 people in this table, or no, 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 we have 18 people in this table. All right, and then the jobs, in the jobs table, we have six rows, waiter, car washer, etc. And then down here in the other table, it's basically just a bridge table. You can see that it has its own identity column, person job ID, so that auto numbers. But then you link the person from up above to the job ID from up here. And that's how those are related. So that will take us pretty nicely into what an inner join is. So an inner join, as mentioned in the podcast, is where you join two tables together to get where, where these matches exist. So let's take a look at this. So we're going to, just for simplicity's sake, we're going to say select all from, and we're going to do persons, alias that is P, just so it's easier to type. And some people like to fully type out inner join. Uh, I prefer just to type uh, join, and we'll do that in just a second to show you it works. So we're going to say inner join, person jobs, PJ, and we need to tell it what to join these tables on. So here we're going to say pj.personid equal p.personid. So we have our person jobs table that we aliased as pj, and the column in that table is person ID. Well, we want to relate that back to person ID in the person table, which is right there. So that's all we do. So p.personid from persons equals pj.personid. And now we want to get what the job information is because person jobs may give us all that information, but that's not readable. You wouldn't be able to do anything with that if you're just looking at it. So now we're going to go back and say join uh, jobs. So looking at this now, same type thing, we said we're going to join the jobs table and we're going to join it based off the jobs job ID equal this person jobs dot job ID. And so if we run this, we will get a list of all the people and the jobs that they have. Now notice we had 18 people in that person's table and we had six, we had six jobs in that jobs table and we definitely don't have 18 rows so there, there's some people that don't have jobs that are in that person table and let's go ahead there's a couple of nice things you can do here that SQL gives you is you can say order by and let's say we're going to order by p dot purse or first name and then p dot last name and that way we can get this data back in a way that might be better for a report that we're trying to do so as you can see here, we're ordered by the first name, then the last name. Then over here, we have the job information. And we can actually see here, we have a couple of people. You can look at these, uh, Jody Jameson. She's got two jobs. She's a waitress and a car washer. And then down here as well, Terrence, he has two jobs. He's a car washer and a programmer. Well, let's say that we want to be able to organize this based off the job name. That might be 
something that we want to run a report on. So let's say J dot job name instead of the, uh, instead of the people. And then that way you can quickly bring these together. So we've just done a lot with the inner join right there using the order by. And another nice thing you can do is let's say that we also want to say, Hey, we only want it where, you know, maybe the first name equals Adam. So let's do P dot first name equal Adam. Now, if we run this, oh, oh, all right. Yeah. Need to be able to spell right. All right. So check it out. Now we've only gotten back the one row that we want, or maybe we didn't want that. Maybe we weren't looking for a person. Maybe we wanted to say J dot job name equal programmer. So now we can see that we have two programmers. So all that's done pretty well and fairly easily using inner joins. But again, we're missing some people here. So what if we say, hey, show us everybody. And if they have a job, show us what that looks like. So in this one, we're going to say, hey, give us everyone and show us what job. All right. So now let's let's go ahead and do this. Essentially. Here, we're just going to copy this because you'll find out real quick that most queries are very similar with just minor, minor differences. So this is the problem right here. And this may become an issue here in a second. And let's take a look at that. So what we want to do is here we've selected persons. Persons, if you think about this, if you're going to lay these out, this would be on the left. And if we put this on the, on the same line here, then this table would be to the right of persons. So persons is on the left and person jobs is on the right. And if we were to bring this up here as well, then person jobs would be on the left of jobs. All right. So I just wanted to bring that up to show you how this works out when you're thinking left join, right join. So right now what we're going to do is we're going to say left outer join person jobs, and we're going to leave that join the same. Now, what we're going to see here is this is actually going to return pretty much the same information. That's not what we want. We know that we have more people than these, than these that showed up here because we have 18 people in the table. The problem is we've left outer join this table right here, but this join to jobs is an inner join. So it's basically getting rid of any nulls. So typically once you start with a left outer join, or if you start with a right outer join, you pretty much need to follow suit all the way down the line. So let's do another left outer join. And again, you can leave out the outer, a left join is implicitly the same thing as a left outer join. Now, if we run this, we've only made a couple changes to this query up here. If we run this, now we'll see that we actually have a full listing of people. But we had 18 people, but now we have 20 results. Well, you have to remember that we had two people that had two jobs. So let's do this. Instead of ordering by job name, let's order by P dot person ID. And that will bring these people all together. All right. So here we can see that Adam Alpha, he doesn't have a job. Uh, Johnny Boy, he doesn't. Billy Bob. None of these people have jobs. Now, here's what the magic of the left outer join does. It gave us back all the people in the left table. So when you do a left outer join, it says, give me everything from the left table. All right. And... If there is something from the right table, go ahead and fill it in. So here we can see this information that came from person job. That's this data right here. And so it filled it in where it had it. And then with this next left join right here, where we left join jobs again, if there's nothing in that person job table, then you're going to get nulls back. But if there was something, then it's going to fill that information in. So essentially it's a way of, of starting with a table 
and not losing anything from that table. And here we'll see the reason why we have two more records than we did people is because Jody Jameson had two jobs. And then the same thing down here with Terrence Waltham. So that's our left outer join. And as you can see, that's pretty valuable. If you want a list of all your people or, or something and you don't want them to drop off just because they're not related to something. Let's say that you have customers, uh, potential customers, and you want to peep all the people, all the customers in your system, whether or not they have placed an order. And that's, that's a very valid thing. Maybe somebody signed up and they were about to place order and they didn't. Well, you wouldn't want to leave those people off like uh, special email reports or something like that. So, so this is a pretty powerful thing. Now, Let's copy this one. Again, the syntax is going to be essentially the same, and I'm just going to demonstrate what the right outer join does. So essentially, remember, this was to the left of this table. So persons, if you were to place these on the lines after it, persons would be to the left of person jobs. Well, if we were going to do a right outer join here, you would want to move persons down to the bottom. And this is why I'm not a fan of right outer joins as much is because it seems backwards, but you'll see how this works in just a second. So we're going to say person jobs and we'll have to change all these predicates here, but let's say right join, or you can say right outer join if you'd like. Right outer join jobs on j.jobid equal pj. And now we're going to say right outer join persons p on p.person id equal pj.person id. All right. This should essentially return us back the same exact thing that the other one did. We have our 20 rows, and here all you can see all that happened is it flipped our columns around. So if we compared these two, Oops. If we compared these two here, you would see that you basically have the same exact results. It's just that now the the name or the people information is all the way on the right in this right outer join, whereas up here the name information was on the left. So that's pretty much it as far as the left and right joins. They essentially do the same thing. It's just the order of the tables in your query. So we've covered the inner join, the left, and the right outer joins, and we're going to conclude part one with that. In part two, we'll pick back up and we'll cover the full outer join as well as the cross joins. And by the end of that episode, you should have a pretty complete understanding of the different types of joins that are common to most database systems. So if you enjoyed this, please do leave us a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel and definitely go over to www.codingblocks.net and check out our site. We've got a podcast where we talk about all things programming and we would love to have you on board. Definitely leave us a comment at comments at codingblocks.net. You can hit us on Facebook, Twitter, we're on LinkedIn. So just head over to www.codingblocks.net and check us out. All right, we'll see you soon in the next part of this video.